What's going on, everyone? Well, that's all, folks. Uh, the season is in the bag. Jamal Murray did it again, two times in the same series. That hurts, right? It's just, man, it's like every time we were there, you know, he credit Denver. They they handled business. They got it done. And uh, they walked away with the series. And in all honesty, I genuinely believe the Lakers were the better team in this series. I mean, they led 90% of this game. But you just saw it. I mean, even in this game, right? You just saw them have these stretches where they just can't score. They get sloppy. They're giving up offensive rebounds. You know, Aaron Gordon was huge. Michael Porter Jr. was huge. Again, this is a series that boiled down to the role guys, to the other guys. Denver's other guys showed up. Lakers didn't, right? Jokic, it wasn't like Jokic was so imposing and so dominant that, like, we had no chance. No, right? Like, for the most part, we were good with Jokic. It just was everybody else. Michael Porter Jr. dropping 20 a game and, you know, Aaron Gordon doing the dirty work and getting the hustle plays and getting the offensive rebounds and, just doing all the hustle and dirty work that they that they needed to pull out the victory, right? And then, you know, KCP, and they just, every time that they needed guys to step up, one team had their guys step up, and the Lakers didn't, unfortunately. But I did love how the Lakers fought. Did love that the Lakers, they didn't just lay down. They had multiple opportunities to just lay down. Uh, they could have easily gotten swept, but they got that prideful win, which I think is very important. I think it's very important for next season. Now, obviously, there's probably going to be a lot of changes in regards to just the Lakers as a whole, and one we'll, we'll touch on here in a moment. But, you know, the Lakers are are definitely a team that they're going to go and search for that other star if they can. If they can land a Trey Young, if they can get a Donovan Mitchell or whomever, they're going to do so. They're going to do whatever they can to upgrade uh, this roster and they actually have the assets now to do so in the offseason. Uh, so we'll see how that shapes up and how that takes place. Um, but they will have guys that are on this roster that will carry over into next season, no matter what they do. Right? And so it would be good to kind of just get this win, get the dark cloud out of the way. This is, Even that final game was a game that you felt like the Lakers genuinely should have won. And it just it sucks. It's unfortunate. But ultimately... You know, the, the Denver Nuggets, they did it again. And, you know, what do you say? You just write it off and just go, hey, you know, they they clearly were the best team. Uh, and the Lakers got to retool, get back to the drawing board, have a good offseason, right? And let's, let's go win a championship next year. just sucks because there was just so much optimism and excitement and belief in the offseason this past offseason, right? Like, you know, you go and, and win the Christian Wood sweepstakes and, you know, we were able to retain and keep everybody on on reasonable contracts and good deals and all this. And you're just looking at it and just like, man, like th this is this is gonna be great. And you know, you get to the mid the the in season tournament. You win the in season tournament. You're five games over 500. It's like, oh, here we go. Let's go, right? Like we come in for the Larry O'Brien now. Lakers are good. Yeah, they've had their concerns. Yeah, they've had their little struggles, but they've won when it mattered. They won when it was important. And you know, it's early in the season, so they're going to get through their hurdles, they're going to get through their hiccups, and we're going to push and go get this uh, this NBA championship. And then right after that in-season tournament, it was just like, nope. <laughs> it was just a, a total disaster. And the whole season, we're just playing uphill and trying to play catch-up, and it just it was unfortunate. But, no, I do appreciate the fight from the Lakers. I do appreciate that they didn't just lay down and call it quits when they very well could have. Um, you know, they, they fought to the very end. And uh, again, this was a series that a couple things go your way. You know, you're the team sending Denver home. So I don't think that they, we were that far off. Right. But I mean, you could say the same thing about last year, right? The Lakers weren't that far off. It just, it unfortunately wasn't enough. One team was able to handle business. The other wasn't, but Darvin Ham, right? So look, Darvin Ham's got to go. Now there are reports per Shams that, it is very likely that Darvin Ham is going to be let go, that some shareholders really want um, and and have their concerns about Darvin Ham for another year. This is two years in a row in which Darvin Ham lost to the same team in dominant fashion. And there was clearly, clearly a coaching disparity. Now, there were moments, right, where Darvin Ham, I thought, looked very good and made the right calls and made the right adjustments. And 
Look, I do think that there are some good traits about Darvin Ham. I do think that he does have the potential to be a great coach. I mean, all their coaches, no matter how great, all had their you know first, second years, right? I mean, even Eric Spolstra is a great example of a coach that people thought he was in way over his head. LeBron James and Anthony Davis, or LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, uh, are in you know. Uh, or in the the office trying to get rid of him, Pat Riley's office trying to get rid of him, telling him like, "Hey, you need to fire this guy." Da da da. Pat Riley sticks with him, and now he's looked at and perceived as one of the, if not the best coaches in the league. I mean, there's plenty of coaches that started out and looked terrible, or or had their struggles and had their hiccups, and then as they progressed year in and year out, eventually got better. And look, if we were a young team, right? Like, let's say LeBron's like, "Hey, I want to leave," and Anthony Davis is like, you know what? If LeBron's leaving, just trade me. And we're going to hit the reset button. We're going to hit the rebuild button. Then fine. Keep Darvin Ham. Right? Let's see what he can do. But if the Lakers are running it back with LeBron and AD, we are in a position to where we have to win now. We need a coach that understands the X's and O's and how to properly game manage and provide proper rotation structure. Right there's there's a lot of key components to being a head coach that Darvin Ham just doesn't get that doesn't understand. Now I don't want people to get their hopes up that the Lakers are going to fire Darvin Ham. Um, I hope that they do. I think that they should. But you never know, right? Like you also have to find a, a qualified replacement that you you believe is that much of an upgrade that you can stick around and make sense to pay Darvin Ham for a couple years and also pay that new coach, right? So. And there's not really a lot of great options out there currently. You know, and if none open up, again, we got a long road ahead of us. There's a lot going on. And I know some people have thrown out the idea of like a Rondo or a, um, you know, a, a, a JJ Redick. But you also run the concerns of the first year head coach hiccups, right? Even Jason Kidd, who is looked at as a great coach now or and is doing a really good job with Dallas. Um, his first stint didn't go very well. He gets let go. He goes and is the Lakers assistant and was excellent as the Lakers assistant and then ultimately ends up getting the Dallas job. And even his first, second year with Dallas, there's a lot of questions and Dallas fans were ready to have him depart. Now look, now he's he's actually done a very good job with Dallas. So again, it's just, it's there's a lot of questions, right? About who can they replace him with? I think bare minimum, if you don't replace him, you need to get a qualified assistant, right? You need to get a Terry Stotts or somebody that is just better with the X's and O's. And I understand, like, you might say, like, oh, well, you know, Terry Stotts, if you're going to have him as your lead assistant, you might as well get him as the head coach. But again, there's a lot of other traits that go into head coaching other than just the X and O stuff and then um, just the the management, right? So to me, you got to get somebody that understands that a little better, um, and then you can kind of have Darvin Ham continue to be the face, also the financial implications and stuff. So, again, it's just it depends on how it shapes up. But I just think for just the locker room, the culture, all of that, I just think it's important to kind of let him go. Um, you know, there. I mean, there's even reports coming out from like back when Darvin Ham benched D'Lo and Reeves, and that it, it supposedly didn't sit well in the Lakers locker room. I just think there's a, a clear disconnect with the Lakers and the head coach Darvin Ham, right? I just think there's there's clearly something that that he just can't seem to to you're already seeing the call outs from Anthony Davis. You're already seeing the questions and and the reports and all the smoke, right? Like there's also a you know, a, a lot going around of LeBron James going into the office in the offseason and potentially um, requesting that he is fired, right? Like, it's just you, you're seeing the players and Darvin Ham really kind of not see eye to eye, and there's just all these hiccups. And look, I was very defensive of Darvin Ham early on and very defensive of Darvin Ham last year, right? But, you know, there comes a point where it's like, okay, you can't really defend you anymore. You're you're clearly, you're making the same mistakes and you're not learning from them. You're having the same hiccups and challenges and you're you're not learning from them. Right? Like early on in the season, it was like, ah, you know, his lineups and timeout. And it's like, okay, yeah, but it's early in the season. They're trying to navigate this new roster and, and returning players. He's trying to figure out 
lineups and okay, which guys are we going with? We're dealing with a bunch of injuries. Like, like there was a lot of factors and circumstances at play as to to you know why Darvin Ham was doing what he was doing early on. But then guys start coming back and we start getting later in the season, and it's just it's the same thing. And it's like okay, now, now we're past the point of like trying to figure stuff out and experimenting. Right, early on, you want to experiment. That's your time to experiment. But after the experimentation period is over, it's like, okay, like, come on, can we kind of figure it out? And it's just like Darvin Ham never really figured it out. And I just think it's time for him. I think it's just time for him to go. I think it's time to go and, and find a replacement, whoever that may be. I know a lot of people say, you know, and think that, oh, it doesn't matter who it is, right? Just replace him. Anyone's better than him. But you'd be surprised. <laughs> Hey, you'd be surprised how bad some coaches can be. So, again, it's just, I don't think you can replace him with just anybody. But I think if you can find the right coach or the right person becomes available or if there's somebody that you think is better at taking a flyer on, then maybe you do it, right? But we'll see. Time will tell. Regardless, it's unfortunate, you know, but next season's a new season, right? You can't win it every year. No team in the history of the league has won it every year in any sport. I, we're we're in we're very uh just we're very spoiled right it's the word we're, we're very spoiled in the sense of like you know the Lakers have been so good and so competitive in championship after championship after championship for so long that it's like you know we we have this expectation and look I'm not saying we shouldn't right we absolutely should and we need to maintain that right it's championship or bust for the Lakers we're not these other organizations that are happy to just make the playoffs. No, this was a disappointing, just waste of a season, right? I mean, it was. But, you know, you can sit back, kind of reflect a little bit, and just go, hey, all right, let's get it. Let's get it next year. Let's get this done. We're not that far removed from a championship. We've seen you, you just got to get the right pieces. You figure out the formula, and I think we can win another championship. I think we could be competing next year. We'll see how it goes. But, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, you know, how do you feel about Darvin Ham? How do you feel about the Lakers as a whole? Um, what do you think the the idea is uh, in the offseason? What should the Lakers do? Again, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.